Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. I'm here behind closed door at CES having some hands-on time with LG's new 2019 OLED televisions with the Alpha 9 second generation processor. And today I want to talk to you about an extension of the partnership between LG Electronics and also Portrait Displays. If you have been following this channel, you will know that last year at CES 2018, both companies worked together to introduce the industry's first 3D LUT auto calibration system on the 2018 OLED and NanoCell televisions. Now, while there were some kinks, this represented a really commendable effort from both parties, especially for a TV manufacturer, to try and recreate the director's intent at a hardware level, allowing users to actually access the auto calibration system to build a 3D LUT, which is the gold standard in the film and broadcast industry, to provide end users in the home, such as yourself, to enjoy content in a manner that is intended by the directors and the producers. Now, for 2019, both companies have not only continued their partnership, they have also introduced two new features on LG's 2019 OLED televisions. And the first feature is going to be a customizable HDR tone mapping. So, as you probably know from watching my videos, HDR tone mapping is designed by the manufacturer to clip at the top end or to roll it off. But what LG has done in conjunction with portrait displays is to allow end users through the Kalman DDC or Direct Display Control Interface to set three customizable HDR tone curves for three different HDR metadata. So if you look at the screenshot here, there are several parameters that you can enter. The top parameter is what is known as luminance. This is just the peak brightness of the display with a 10% window. And this is necessary to tell the TV how to adjust the tone curve to track the PQ UTF or perceptual quantization electro-optical transfer function curve in as accurate a manner until either the roll-off point or the clipping point. Because at the factory, LG actually assumes that all panels are 700 nits, so it actually designed the tracking at 700 nits. But most of these 2019 OLEDs, they are shipping at a peak brightness of higher than 700 nits. So they will be slightly brighter. I don't think it is going to be visible in real-life content, but it is going to be slightly brighter than the PQ UOTF reference. But with this entry of data of the actual luminance of the panel you physically own, you can tell the TV to track PQ correctly until a certain point. And then you can actually set three separate metadata points. So the best and I think the most logical way to utilize this is to set it for 1000 nit max CLL, for 4000 nit max CLL, and for 10000 nit max CLL, because these are the most common max CLL metadata for 1000 nit content that is mastered on a BVM X300 monitor, for 4000 nit content that is mastered on a Dolby Pulsar, or 10000 nit that is usually found in games. And obviously you can choose to set other values for these parameters. For example, if you wanted to set different tone curves for let's say 500 nits or 1000 nits or 1500 nits, no one is actually stopping you from doing that. But if you use all three slots for this peak brightness levels, that means that you don't gain any control over, let's say, 4,000 content, especially titles from Warner Brothers and Sony Pictures. They're all mastered on Dolby Pulsar and they usually give you a max CLL or mastering display luminance of near 4,000 nits. So the best way to use this is going to be set it to 1,000 nit, 4,000 nit, and also 10,000 nits for games. And I'll explain the second option within each level, which is the roll-off point. Now, with roll-off point, you decide at which level the tone curve will actually start to deviate from the PQ EOTF standard to maintain some specular highlight detail without clipping. Now, obviously, if you want to just follow the Sony BVM X300 monitor, so it basically just goes up to 1000 and then just hard clips. If you want to 
emulate that behavior on your LG 2019 OLED and nanocell televisions, you can just set the roll of point to 100%. So the 100% is actually relative to the luminance that you've put in the first place. So if you actually set it to 50%, it means that the roll of point will be starting at 410 nits because we measured this panel to have a peak brightness of 820 nits. So that is how the roll off point works. And I think this feature will be extremely handy, especially for content creators out there who for one reason or another, they want to either match the X300 monitor or they want to match the Adobe Pulsar using a 2019 OLED. Well, there you go, you know, it's so customizable. And what I'm going to do now is to talk about the second feature, which is the internal pattern generator. And again, I think this feature will come as a welcome news to DIY enthusiasts out there who wish to calibrate your own TV. but is prohibited by the cost of entry because realistically for a professional calibrator like myself you know i own this exact meter here the client k10a i own the spectracal software kalman and i own a separate signal generator which is capable of sending out standard dynamic range data sending out hdr and also dolby vision metadata for Dolby Vision calibration, but such a signal generator, the cheapest or the most affordable one on the market, is going to be around what 1500 US dollars. So that is a very high cost of entry. Now, LG is thinking about DIY enthusiasts like yourself, so they've actually put an internal pattern generator into the TV itself. So all you need to buy is basically a copy of the Kalman software. I'm not entirely sure of the license level that you need. And also just a C6 meter, which costs around like 200 pounds or 200 US dollars. And the pattern generator is going to be in the TV itself. And you can just ask the Kalman direct display control to access the internal pattern generator on the television, put up whatever size you want. Usually we use 10% window for either SDR or HDR calibration and then you can either use manual calibration or use the 3D LUT auto calibration to reach the color fidelity that is seen on studio mastering monitors and I can't begin to express how big this step is an internal pattern generator on a television set. Now, this is Vincent Teo here, reporting from CES in Las Vegas. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HGTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.